Mayorkas has clearly botched everything at the border. It's a terrible, terrible tragedy. We're talking about individuals from different nations that want to do us harm. Many experts had predicted a giant surge of illegal immigrants across the border. That doesn't appear to have happened, with border arrests down sharply. The Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas says it's too early to tell if the migrant wave has peaked. So is this law in border crossings a sign of progress, or is this just the calm before the storm? Well, to answer that question, Reverend Sam Rodriguez joins us now. He's the president of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference which is the world's largest Hispanic Christian organization. Pastor, we appreciate you joining us and taking the time to talk about this very important issue. Thank you for having me. Pastor, you have actually presented a plan to Congress regarding what you and your organization would do in leading the charge for those trying to get into the country legally. Isn't that group, though, as we look back, aren't they being overlooked due to the onslaught of illegals coming into the U.S.? completely agreed. To answer your initial query, it is the calm before the storm. The current melees at the border speaks to a humanitarian crisis, speaks to a political optic crisis, hence the temporary calm, not a coincidence, what in California we deem as a coinkadink, which means what? You know, we have to ask one question, Joe, how many more? That's the only question we should be asking regarding border immigration policies, how many more? How many more young men and women, how many more kids will be sexually molested and experience human and sex trafficking as a result of our current open border policy? How many more young men and women in America will die because of fentanyl overdoses because of what's happening right now in the southern border? How many more cartels will we embolden and fund through trafficking, coyotes, drug trafficking, and so forth. The question is how many more? How many more months and years will we tolerate of lawlessness in the southern border? To answer your question, we submitted a plan to President Obama. We submitted a plan personally at dinner with President Trump and to members of Congress, both sides of the aisle. And the plan is around comprehensive immigration reform that secures our border it brings an end to all illegal immigration. It respects the fact that immigrants are a blessing, not a curse, when they come here legally. It addresses all the issues of various economic sectors. And by the way, it does away with the issue of what do we do with currently those that have been here for 15, 20, 25 years illegally? What do we do with these individuals? Hey, if they're paying taxes, if they're not engaged in nefarious activities, if they are not at all a burden, be, meaning that they are living off government entitlements or subsidies, let's find a legal pathway for these individuals that have been here for years and their kids were raised here, but let's never grant them citizenship. Let's do away with the political magnet that empowers political parties to permit the border to continue to be open. Let's do away with that. Both sides of the aisle agree, especially moderates and even very strong conservatives. We have a prescription. We should incorporate it and apply it as soon as possible. Well, according to that plan, some were listening, some were not. With reports on border arrests down sharply since Thursday's Title 42's expiration, this issue is obviously far from over. You've said before, according to the Bible, we need to be pro-immigrant. But you've added, as a sovereign nation with laws, we have to stop illegal immigration. So what's your message to California politicians and those in Washington, D.C., about a long-term solution? Yeah, enough is enough. Stop playing politics with human lives on both sides of the border, by the way. Stop playing politics with American citizens who are, we're losing our sovereignty. We literally have an open border, regardless of what you hear from the current administration. And by the way, I worked with President Obama on immigration likewise. And his border policies were a lot more strict and a lot more common sense than the current administration. So it's not about Democrats and Republicans. Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. It's an, a de facto open border. Would you stop playing politics of human lives? Hey, Joe, you're aware of that, that child that died, that perished in the past few days. Listen, we have to stop this. Here's the plan. Secure our border immediately. Stop all illegal immigration. Do away with catch and release. What a ludicrous idea. You come in here illegally, we'll give you a piece of paper that says, at your discretion, try to show up for a hearing. By the way, in the meantime, deuces, go on. Do whatever you want to do. 
show up at your discretion. No, no other nation does this. Right now, China and Russia are laughing up a storm at the price of human beings on both sides of the border. We can do this. Republicans and Democrats come together. Let's pass comprehensive immigration reform immediately. And over the weekend, I'm glad you brought that up because reports were that those sheets of paper, hey, you have a hearing in 2027. You have a hearing in 2028. So <laughs> you're right. They, they seem to uh, just go about doing what they want. Over the weekend, several politicians said exactly, Pastor, what you've been saying for years, make the border secure and then we'll deal with everything else. So what do you think it will take, though, for this administration to finally do things like put up the rest of Trump's wall that's currently in storage and what needs to happen on a larger scale to get their attention for them to continue to build the wall? It's going to require moderate Democrats and the Latino segment of the Democratic Party to revolt. It's going to require Hispanic Americans who are Democrats. And right now it's, it's about 60, 40 split right now. But it's going to require moderate Democrats who don't want an open border, who want to bring an end to this fentanyl pandemic. Moderate Democrats, not every single Democrat is an open border Democrat. The vast majority say we should have a border like every other nation, that we control entry and exit and so forth. Let these moderate Democrats rise up. Robert Kennedy Jr. is offering a prescription that lines up with the prescription that I just submitted for your consideration. How about that? So it's not a Republican Democrat issue. In order for President Biden, I think President Biden is surrounded by individuals who have this very ultra super progressive left wing socialist communist mindset that, that they really believe these immigrants will be democratic voters inevitably. We're gonna legalize them five, 10, 15 years from now. We're solidifying in perpetuity our base and our control of the American political structure. That's what it is. It's a political game with human beings. It's morally reprehensible. Something has to happen immediately. The pastor, Border Patrol agents in San Diego arrested an Afghan national on the FBI's terror watch list after he crossed illegally with a group of migrants last Wednesday. Five migrants were arrested in Tucson over the weekend. Uh, they're also on the terror watch list. Why hasn't more attention been on something like this? And do you think these announcements are going to be uh, a norm with such an open border? Joe, let's be honest, geopolitically speaking, from a foreign policy perspective, arguably, our number one, quote unquote, rival, competitor, enemy, maybe politically, geopolitically, China. Chinese nationals are coming in. So this is not just Mexicans from Sinaloa. These are not just Salvadorians. The, we're talking about individuals from different nations that want to do us harm. That's not rhetoric. They have literally stated that their objective is to do away with American dominance or, or in, in the world in the world sphere, right? So Afghans, Chinese, again, people on terrorist watch lists, the, our border is open. What will it require for President Biden to have a come to Jesus moment regarding immigration reform? Will it require a terrorist attack by one of these individuals? Will it require some, God forbid, a, egregious action taking place in one of our inner cities or one of our cities? Something has to happen now. We can do this. We have the wherewithal, the acumen, the fortitude, the resources. We can read license plates from satellites all the way in Afghanistan and Iraq and Iran. We can see thousands crossing over the Rio Grande. We can stop illegal immigration right now. It's the right thing to do. President Trump did a great job in respect to that area. And even President Obama in his first term did a great job in, in securing our border. I'm asking President Biden to do the same for the sake of these individuals, for the sake of our citizenry, please stop illegal immigration, stop catch and release, and let's pass comprehensive immigration. A federal judge on Thursday evening blocked the Biden administration from so-called catch and release as in freeing migrants without court dates. President Biden has been coming under tremendously heavy fire for not having a plan, and he himself has warned Americans that we are in for chaos. Well, joining us now is former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. Governor, good to see you. Doug, great to be with you. You know, when the president admits that it's chaos, it's really bad because normally when there is chaos, he ignores it. And he's like the Leslie Nelson character in Naked Gun who's standing in front of an exploding factory saying, nothing to see here, let's disperse. This time, he cannot ignore what's going on right in front of every American. 
And, and what an about face, because Secretary Mayorkas has been saying for months and months and in many uh, instances of congressional testimony that the border is secure. People laugh in his face. Apparently, they're now admitting it's not. I, I've never seen a public official that is so obtuse when it comes to the effect of the way he's carried his job. Uh, Mayorkas has clearly botched everything at the border. Uh, not to be outdone by Vice President Kamala Harris, who the president put there to be the border czar. She's been down one time for a quick photo op, in and out, not really looking at the challenges of the border. But I think most Americans do understand, whether they're Democrat or Republican, that this is not about just people coming across the border because they want to come and get a better education for their kids or they want a better job. What we're looking at 100,000 Americans are dying because of the fentanyl that's coming across the border sponsored by the drug cartels. And hundreds of thousands of children, not adults, children are being sold off into sex slavery in the human trafficking ring that right now is making as much, if not more money for the cartels than the drugs are. And that ought to be just disgusting to every uh, thoughtful American to see human beings being exploited like this, they pay everything they have to get across the border. They pay it to these coyotes and the cartels. And then when they get here, they find out that they've been deceived and lied to. And these children then are uh, taken into sex slavery and used as, as objects. And it is just disgusting. It, it truly is. It's just an unbelievable situation. And that's a part of the story that Americans seldom see because there's nobody out there with TV cameras filming it routinely. But uh, it's a terrible, terrible tragedy. Let's uh, go into a little bit of this federal judge's ruling late last night because it's the freshest news in regard to the border crisis. Again, a federal judge in Florida blocked uh, this Biden administration plan to release migrants in the U.S. on parole because of a surge expected once an emergency immigration restriction known as Title 42 is lifted. I understand that this is just part of the process and there'll be more legal steps to follow, but what do you make of this judge's ruling? Well, it was a good ruling and in large part because what he was saying is that an administration can't just suspend the law because it's gonna be inconvenient. And that's really what the Biden administration was saying. We can't process this many people. So therefore, we're just going to pretend the law doesn't exist and we're going to just turn them loose and let them go. And I think the judge rightly said, that's like saying to people who are overrunning a retail store and stealing everything in it, you know, we, we just don't have enough cops to stop it. So we're going to say, do the best you can, uh, get all you can, take it home and enjoy it. Uh, that's not how our country's supposed to work. We have to work within a rule of law. The judge made a good decision. This is a crisis of the Biden administration's own making because they reversed on the first day of Joe Biden's presidency every single uh, immigration policy that was in place that was actually working. And we had the border under the most control in the past 45 years. It wasn't perfect, but it was uh, well getting there. Uh, border security with a wall continuing uh, being built. Uh, we had clear remain in Mexico policies and an agreement with Mexico on that. People understood from countries around the world, they weren't going to just walk across the border. On day one, Joe Biden erased every bit of that. And we're now paying the price and seeing the horrific results of those decisions.